Welcome back to the channel, my friend. Victor Osman is banging in goals, and we are going to break down exactly what he's doing to figure out what we can take into our games to also bang in the goals. Let go. So, Victor, as most of you guys will know, plays for Napoli. Did a great job last year. They won the league, and he's still banging in the goals. So let's go ahead and have a look at this very first play. What you see here is a defender getting ready to pressure attacker. Victor is facing away from the goal that he is attacking. Oops, it's a body feint. Boom, and he's gone. Why does this work? Why was this so effective? It's so simple. Why is it working? All right. Well, it's working for the main reason that... When you are facing away from your goal, the defender thinks he has to pressure you. He knows he has to pressure you, and he should. But sometimes they're too aggressive. And because they're so aggressive, a little movement will allow you to get past them. Messi's great at this. We all know Eden Hazard. I almost said rest in peace because <laughs> the dude retired. He's not dead, is he? Is he? Is Eden dead? What happened to Eden Hazard? Do we need to do analysis of Eden Hazard? Uh, let's get back to this, all right. If you're looking for a place where you can cultivate this skill and grow with top players, Goal Army Nation, Fight Club for Footballers, our members only group is the place where you can get exclusive programs on mindset, speed and strength, skill training, nutrition, exclusive interviews, and a whole lot more. I'm just saying, link down below. This next one is a situation that you're going to find yourself constantly in. If you're a striker, you're back to goal, you're in and alone with all of these players right around you. The one principle you have to understand is that you always want to turn no matter what. If you can turn, that's that's everything. Now, he fights to get himself there. Now, as we pause it here, you see that the goalie is pointing out. He's pointing because he wants his defenders to know he's going to cut the ball back. And because he's going to cut it back, you guys better be ready for it. Please be ready because this dude is going to cut the ball back. All right. Keeper, as you can still see, is pointing. He's going to cut it back. Make sure to follow all of the runners, defenders. He's going to cut it back. He's going to oh, shit. shit. Did he just score on me? Shit. That's what's going on in his head. Shit. I didn't just let that in, did I? Yes, I did. All right. Now, we can't entirely blame the, the goalkeeper for everything, but to be perfectly honest, the defenders do a great job of pushing him wide. That's all you can do. The guy's already in the box. You've got to push this guy wide. Why does this work? Because he's already looked here. At this point, he's getting ready to shoot. He's already looked. He's only shooting. He knows that there's a chance that he can squeeze that in that little hole right there on the near post, and he goes. At worst, look, as the goalkeeper reaches out, the worst case scenario is that it goes out for a corner kick, all right? And I like those odds. Once again, another position that all players are going to find themselves in. Striker, defender, midfielder, whatever. Unless you're a goalie. Goalies are weird. They don't have souls. It's, an, it's a whole thing. Check out our, our goalie channel, GK Goalie Remy. We're going to start doing documentaries on there. You, you'll enjoy it. As you can see here, Victor's about to receive the pass. The defender is once again putting pressure on him because he has to. He's a little late. But what does he do? He steps on the ball. Why does he step on the ball? The reason that you step on the ball, especially in a situation like this, when you're unsure of what's behind you is because there's a massive distance between you and the defender. He is not, you're not getting that ball for me. I don't care how big you are. You're gonna have to go through me to get it. That's a foul, all right? So utilize this, but there's one more port. There's one more portion, I should say, that he does very well. He reaches out. The guy's got his arm extended full. He's ready to brace. For impact, right? He knows that the guy's coming, and why do you want him to come? The second he hits you, you know how hard he hits you, what speed he's coming, where he's coming. You know everything, all right? So if you just feel a light touch or a push, you know that this guy's ready to run back with you, that the space in front of you is there. If he smashes into you, it's time to roll and spin, right? You roll and spin this guy, and that's exactly what happens here, is that he gets spun, right? And he's gone. Now, there was no danger and no need for him Obviously, there's no need for this guy to win this tackle here in the middle of midfield. You could just stand him up, right? And it, as a defender, if you're going to make this play like that, make sure you foul him, meaning that you foul him and he falls over. There's no way that you can let him just turn. And now all of a sudden is off, you know, off to the races with these guys. That's 
That's unacceptable. So those of you that are part of Glory Nation are going to recognize the situation because we talked about it in our Mitoma breakdown, which isn't out on here because it's in G Nation. Go right down below, $3.99, my friends, for a seven-day trial. It is about to skyrocket. Glory Nation 2.0 is coming. Now, check this out. As the ball gets crossed in, he has an option. This player reaches up way over to try and block that, and instead of just heading it, he decides, I'm going to chest it. And as soon as you chest the ball like this, you have you have to follow the rules. There are some very strict rules here. When you're in the box and you try to chest a high ball or take a ball down, you cannot let it drop. He knows that, takes it off his thigh, smashes it into the top of the net, all right? If you try and let this ball down, the defenders know they can then pressure you. And your, your options are incredibly limited, all right? And so... He stays calm to chest it. The thigh is an awkward touch, but then he smashes it. And let's switch to the defender side to just talk about one thing for the defenders that are watching. Forget about the guy who tried to jump up. That's the best he's going to do. He's a little out of place. It happens. Now, this play right here, right as we're about to see that Victor is about to, to take this shot, there's no leg out. Now, we don't want to blame him for this goal. Clearly, there's a bunch of things happening, so don't, don't get this incorrect. But what he could do is, of course, reach that foot out. By reaching his foot out, he's not going to allow Victor to have a full swing on the ball. And that's what you can do as a defender once you're beat. Make it hard on them to shoot. It might be the difference. As we can kind of see here, he's taking a shot. He's trying to block it to some degree, but he knows he's getting ready to fall. Maybe he doesn't want to get smashed in the face. He doesn't. He just kind of turns and looks back. He's like, is that going to go in the goal? Uh, might not go in the goal. Ah, crap, it's, it's in the goal, right? This is a tremendous goal and a tremendous principle. If you guys can understand this, it'll work on the wing just as well. But for you strikers, notice Victor's about to receive the ball and he's facing completely. He's got his back completely to the goal. The defender right next to him is clearly goal side. He thinks he has everything covered because clearly he's not gonna turn. So as this pass comes in, which is a perfectly weighted pass, all of a sudden things start to be a big issue when he decides, I'm going to turn. And now the defender realizes, oh crap, I'm not goal side. He's he's going to beat me there. And it's a goal. Back of the net before you know it, right? But you cannot telegraph this. If right here, it looked like he was going to turn the defender, you would clearly know and he would cover that. So he's got to wait until the last second and then turn and then make that happen. It's brilliant, right? So remember that principle when you are in the game. Now, we won't talk too much about his heading ability. He's a tremendous, he's tremendous in the air uh, with his headers. This one right here is a clinical one. You head across from where it's going. That's not always going to be the case, but it's a good principle to have because if we see the goalkeeper here, you got to notice this goalkeeper has to shift across with the, with the ball. He moves, he moves, he's got to get there, he plants, and it's too late. Right? It's not even that hard of a header, but because he has to shift back and forth, there's nothing he can do. That's the vid, my friends. Subscribe, like, comment, check out all of the links and stuff. If you guys want to check out our podcast, please do that. The link is right down below. We have a podcast every Friday with different guests, celebrities, athletes, you name it. All sorts of stuff. You guys are really going to enjoy that. Of course, check out Golarami Languages, GK Golarami, and check out G Nation. You guys will not regret it. Get it before it's gone because Golarami Nation 2.0 is here. Peace out.